Buffalo Roll Bros. All of you guys asked for it, and here you'll get it. The story of how I became a hacker. I mean, dude, can you talk about this on a video? It's gonna be really difficult because I don't know what that company's up to right now, but uh -huh. I don't care. The world needs to know, and it's just fun to reminisce about. I'm stoked. I can't wait to see where this story goes and what you can talk about, what you can't talk nope. about. But first, can we get everyone to do us a big, huge favor? Because look at this face. Not that face right there because that is terrifying. This face right here is gonna haunt my nightmares, I'm pretty sure. That guy wants you to press the like button. I know he does. And if you guys have not pressed the red subscribe button yet, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button for Melvin because look, he's moving up and down because he doesn't know what to do. There's not enough likes, okay? Remember the video where I told all about how I met Chad? Yes, yes I do. It seemed like a lot of people were just curious all about that backstory and especially what happened next because I did leave it on a cliffhanger. Oh, that's of, uh, right, what happened. you did. That whole video was just about how I met Chad but it definitely led down some crazy revelations. Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to talk about these. How in the world did you get part of this group? Like you went pretty deep. You were pretty deep into it. Well, it all started with a mysterious phone call. Sound familiar, Red? You're a funny guy. Yeah, that's that's funny. I, yeah. I, I, I see what you did there. <laughs> oh, I, I got this call on my birthday, right? As we mentioned before. I, I couldn't understand the voice. It was definitely some kind of robotic sounding voice. That was the person that actually started the phone call? It wasn't anything else? I thought it was a scam call or a prank or something. They're just like, hey, want to join this organization? Like it was that easy or what the heck? How, how did you even No. Why did you even I consider had to... this? Well, first, they called me up. They asked if I wanted to make some really good money. And at the time, I wasn't working. So I was like, yo, I'm down. Down. Okay, down, bro. so did they find out that you weren't working? That's why they, like, knew what to say to you? I'm just so curious, like... They knew a lot what? about me, which I thought was, uh, strange. And I didn't even question it at the time. Now that you mention it... It's like they knew about you before you... Like, knew anything about them. That's kind of spooky. Well, at these days, I figured, okay, you know, it's they just use the internet to get all this info. But why you, though? Like, why was why was it you? Uh. <laughs> we just both fell in the lava right there. Oh, my gosh. Maybe, okay, two reasons. Prior to that, I was working on another YouTube channel, just doing, like, narrations and stuff and top tens and editing for that. Okay. But also, it seemed like they were aware that I had met Chad and V prior. Like, they were like following your Instagram and saw that you posted about them type thing or what? They seem to know. I think once I posted that picture on my Instagram, my first picture ever with the infamous Chad and V. But you just met them at a gas station. It's not like you like were their best friend or anything. Like, why would... Well, this phone call, surprisingly enough, did not mention anything about Chad and V. This phone call that I received was pretty much just like a task rabbit kind of dealios or like a Uber or like a Postmates thing where sure. you download an app or they send you a location, you go to point A and do something at point A, then go to point B. Were you just like trusting these guys that they were gonna pay you? Well, you they know? told me that I do a simple pickup and that's $10,000 in the pocket. That's why you did it, okay, got and not it. only 10 grand, Got but like it. an opportunity to do more work like that. And I'm like, yeah, bro, that's easy. I, I drive, you know, I mean, I I'm, not, I'm not trying to be that guy or anything, but don't you think like $10,000 like for doing something super simple was kind of sus? Like, were you like, I don't know if this is, if this is legit, if I should continue this? Well, I live in Las Vegas. So there's a lot of people who come around with crazy amounts of money for no reason, wanting people to do stuff for crazy amounts of money for whatever their purpose is. Okay, all right. I didn't even question it. Got no it. way. I, I thought maybe I was just picking up like a special uh, VIP, someone who was important already to their business, and I would be able to learn more about the business by doing this little pickup mission. So the first day on the job, they give me a call and tell them to meet them at their headquarters, their office space, so to speak. They gave me an address that was on the Las Vegas Boulevard. I think everyone watching this video right now can probably put the pieces together on what he's talking about. Okay. I pull up to the Luxor Las Vegas. A couple of pictures, of course, just in case you're not familiar. Right. But it's one of the older, like, iconic landmarks of the Las Vegas skyline. Been around for ages. So it made sense to me that this was a great opportunity. Maybe don't follow those calls, you know? You should be careful whoever you talk to on the phone. I don't know, man. Like, I, I agree right. you weren't working at the time, but still. But when I saw that it was at the Luxor Las Vegas, I was like, oh, this is so legit. When you walked into the Luxor, what were your first thoughts? So when I walked in, of course, I've been to the Luxor before. I know what to expect. Right. They had told me to go to the top floor of the Luxor, which I didn't even know was a thing. Is that like a penthouse? Like, what is that up there? What I thought originally was at the top floor of the Luxor, the very tippy top of the pyramid, just like a light room. That's you know how they have that big projection of light 
that comes out. That's what I thought. But then, yeah, there ended up being like this little room, a little nice office space up there where um, I first saw the leader of the organization. That's when I started getting a little creeped out. You know, you'd expect to see some nice who in two in big baller, multi-millionaire guy wearing glasses, a nice suit, dress shoes, and all that stuff. And, well, dude, if I, if, I mean, obviously everyone listening to this video right now knows exactly what's going on at this point. Why wouldn't you have just walked out right now? Like, I would have been like, nope. I would have noped out of that room so fast, bro. And I already committed my gas money to get there. So I was like, I, I gotta hear them out. If I would have saw some dude in a mask when the door opened and he's like, hey, we got some stuff to talk about. I'd be like, no, I'm good. Everyone's seen the iconic mask yep. designed originally by Guy Fox and popularized in the use for uh, V for Vendetta as like a sign of um, counterculture and anarchy and whatever. What keeps you not just saying I'm out? There's something, there's something definitely sus here. Well, honestly, what kept me was the money is number one. And second, the curiosity of it all. After he introduced himself as the leader of the organization, okay. he brought in eight other people, all wearing the same thing. You have nine people with masks on around you in a, in a build. I, I don't know, man. I, I, they hand you cash in hand, like at the door? Well, it was scary, but the fact that it was at the Luxor, which is a public place, that like anyone could go up to. Like, I can't go miss, like, you know, what's, what's the worst that's gonna happen inside one of these commercialized areas? All right, I'm with you. Yeah, when everybody else came in, everyone was kind of nice, like they greeted me. No handshakes though. Everyone was like, hey, nice to meet you. Do you think I'm revealing too much already? Okay. But what was more insane, they introduced themselves to me in numerical order one through eight in hoodies and a mask well everyone had a mask on it made sense i felt like okay this is probably some kind of uh creative project and everyone wants to be anonymous you just couldn't tell who anyone was because no names no faces everybody watch this video <laughs> yeah wouldn't that sketch you guys out if you showed up to some place like hey i'm here to have this job and everyone has a mask on and no one goes by their names what is this squid game maybe those guys were just as new as me at the time I mean it definitely seemed like you know, the first two people that introduced themselves, uh, very, very interesting people, especially the second guy. I think he actually had some kind of scoliosis or whatever. That person was a friend of yours though, right? Pretty a little sure. bit, like, we got close. Like how'd they get the numbers? Were they just like, who well, joined the organization first or what? Well, Curious. this is when it became apparent to me because I didn't know how to introduce myself. Um, of course, I'm, you know, it might be a job interview. So hello, nice to meet you. Hey, my name is, he immediately shushed me with probably one of the coldest fingers that I could ever have felt. Got it. It didn't even feel human to me. Calculated, scary, precise fast and direct and you still kept going with the process that just shows how broke you were at the time bro i mean people will do worse for money <laughs> i'm sure this is where i sort of felt like this is a cool thing he told me that it didn't matter who i was before to take my past histories and traumas anything that troubled me and just to forget about it because i have the chance to start over again from the very beginning okay and at that point he told me that i was number nine which i thought was pretty sick because also that's like my birth month. So I was like, oh, cool, how lucky. I feel like it was all calculated. Like they, these guys were like targeting you from the beginning. The leader told me that I was selected for my particular set of skills based off of what was online for me. And at that point it was just like making videos. I had a couple of like fighting videos. I thought finally for once I could put those skills to use. I feel like you were targeted from the beginning. Like, I feel like they knew you were low on friendships. They knew you were a loner. They knew you didn't have a lot of money so they could, you, you were manipulated, bro. They made me feel welcome. So after I had met everybody and made my introductions, you know, I felt a little sketched out because I was like, oh man, well, they have all seen what I look like and I don't know what they look like. That's when the leader in the organization was like, here, number nine, take this mask. Did you feel weird that you had to wear this mask like everybody else? Or were you like, okay, this is cool. This is super normal. It felt cool because yeah, because I blend in with everybody else and we look like a unit. Right I guess guy. I was really lonely, I man. just, I'm saying, they picked the right guy, it sounds like, for this situation. Because you wouldn't have gotten to this point, would I you? I probably wouldn't have. I'd have been like, bro, no. I would have got in that room and been like, there are eight people with masks in here. And the main guy is talking like a robot. I'm out. I'm going to go work well, at we McDonald's. All, it seemed like we all had nothing to lose. The whole, our first team moment where we all sort of bonded, they had us sit in a circle and they put on this little fog machine thing and just had us meditate in I, silence. I know what this is. Okay, everybody, comment below if you guys know exactly what this mist or fog machine stuff that Melvin's talking about. It's definitely panic. 
We were all sitting in a circle, and I was just looking rapidly, left and right. Well, yeah. Hey, 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 is anybody else, like, freaked out by this? But they all seemed to have gone through the process. They knew it was cool, and I had to put some faith and trust into them. And so I just let it happen. I breathed in the fog just like everybody else was doing. And before I knew it, it's truly a new man. What, Red? I just, I, I'm just like, bro, why would you do that? Like, I just, I, I wish I would have met you sooner. Okay, I wish I would have met you sooner so that we could we could have been gaming. We could have been hanging out. You didn't have to put yourself through this. You know, I just. Well, hey, if I wasn't, if it wasn't for the steps that I went through doing all these, would I have even met I, you in the first place? I mean, I guess you're right. right. Still, bro, you sat in this mist and you became a new person. Like, what happened then? Was that since I was the newest guy, I pretty much had to stay back at the Luxor and do a lot of desk work. I was editing a lot of videos at the time. They really had like some ghetto editing software, like where everything you'd edit would just have like glitches and and problems and stuff. I wonder if they did yeah, that on purpose. I think they leaned into it. They knew it was bad and they probably got the editing software for free because that's when I started realizing, oh, these guys are really tech savvy. They know how to work computers, especially number four. Don't comment down below who number four is because- uh, Oh my yeah, gosh, it might be too late. I don't know who, but it seemed like that that organization had a national grasp. There's like maybe a few of them that I've never met since that first day. But all I knew is that I got my money and I was just, hey, I was just editing some videos for a long time. Yeah, and maybe it was a little sketch, but I thought it was nice. So they, they had you targeted from the get-go. I think a lot of people didn't understand the goal of the organization at the time. But number one, I started noticing something with him where he realized uh, he didn't like it. Number one was the first person to bring up his concerns to everybody else. I think he was really close with number four and they had a lot of time where they were talking together and uh, the leader didn't like that. You gotta think like number one's probably been there the longest, right? So he's probably had the most time to be with that organization. So he could, a pretty good foothold on how they treated people, I'm sure. He was the first person to sort of challenge the ideas of the leader. And I'm like, I don't know, bro. I mean, I saw no reason to leave. Everybody else was in. Uh, maybe except for number one. That's when I got the call that number one betrayed the whole organization. How did you feel about that? I saw it coming with everything that he talked about, saying that he didn't believe in, in, in what the leader was saying and he felt wrong to do some of these things and the money didn't matter to him. He was always interested in some kind of psychology at the time, the human brain and why people say the things they do or like when they're lying or something. Uh, you know, okay, really I, I see stuff. where that's going. The next week afterwards, I get a call from the leader one day and he calls me to, to offer me a promotion. He told me um, all I would have to do is a simple, a simple pickup and he would promote me to being on field missions. I thought, oh, that's great. Cause I'm tired of sitting behind a desk. Let me, let me out. Let me showcase what I can do. I want to prove myself to the leader that like, bro, I'm your man. Like not only can I edit videos, but I think I'm like, you know, a little athletic, just a little bit. This whole time you're saying this, man, I'm just like, dude, ugh. He had you painful? from the he had you from the beginning, bro. Are we learning lessons from this? I hope you're learning lessons. Don't trust random people with masks. Now, that should be like the first lesson here. But two, if it's too good to be true, a lot of times it is, guys. Fred, I'm an idiot. I just trust whoever. I mean, I even trust you despite all the stuff that's going on. I'm, I'm too hopeful to see the good in people and too dumb to see the bad in people. Nothing wrong with being trustworthy. It's just that, you know, I've got your best interest at heart. I mean, you know, you were just trying to get, you were looking out for yourself. You were trying to make money. You were trying to make a living. So I get it. I can't, okay. I can't fault you for that. Thanks, Red. I appreciate that a lot. And then that's when my world started turning upside down when he told me I just have to go uh, to the desert and, and uh, just pick somebody up. Sure. I've, I've lived in Las Vegas for a long time. I know the desert. Little did I know that the person I was trying to pick up was number one. Apparently he got caught up by some of the other members of the organization. I think he had a scuffle with number six. It's super weird because when I, when I pull up, I can see him from a distance that that was number one, without a doubt. It was the same shirt, same pants, same body build, but no mask. And he was tied up, but he was getting freed by somebody. Hey, can you guess who was freeing him? I think we all can guess who was freeing him, but go ahead. None other than the YouTubers that I had met a month prior. What was your thought right here though? You're like, <gasps> Absolutely mind blown. I, I see them interfering with my mission. Definitely call, call my boss. Hey, leader, got a situation here. Without much fuss, he just said that I would know what to do and it's time to put my skills in action and that he was always watching. We've never heard anything from this side before. Make sure, like, you know, especially with all the stuff that we've been going through 
and and this drone thing. Don't say that. This is a good idea. We don't Wait, want to, should just, I stop now? No, no, just don't talk about the drone. I feel like everything you're talking about right now, I feel like it's this is pr pretty sketch already. Somehow the leader had eyes on me. He knew what I was doing. He knew that I needed to rescue number one or or capture him. I don't know. It was very it was a very unique an interesting situation I walked in on. But all I knew is that if I wanted to get that bag, unbeknownst to Chad and V, the random video editor guy that they had met a month before, that first field mission I had was the first day that I physically fought Chad Wild Clay. That is crazy, bro. Your first time out, you had to beat up a guy that you just met like a month ago. Obviously, if you've been paying attention or you know about it, then you know I failed. We made it to the end of this obby. Wait, Whoa. this is it? We finished the, the I, obby? I guess so. This is the end of the obby. I don't even realize that. Wow. Holy smokes. Well, wow. so well we need to do another one because... I've been telling you all the stuff about my sketchy history. What about you, bro? What about me? Why don't you tell me about your history? I, dude, let, we're not going to talk about my history. That This video is about you and your, your hacker stuff. Why are we? Yeah, but you're my stuff? partner in crime. What about all the stuff we're doing now? What about like this, this drone thing? How did you even talk it down from like uh, uh, taking us down in the mountains? Only understand what you're doing in this forest after I explicitly told you not to be. We're, we're on a video. This is a video on YouTube. Um, so just l just let it go. We don't need to talk about that I mean, right I've said so many suspicious things already about my past, and, and I'm clearing up my name. You have yet to still prove that you're not no, sus at all in any kind no, of... I or more fashion. <laughs> I, I told I told you, bro. You just need to, you you have to trust me here. I, I've said that multiple times. We're we're good. Oh, we can sit in the hot tub. I want to sit in this hot tub. Let's I'm gonna sit tub. across from you. There we go. Yeah, sit in this hot tub. This is great. Well, oh. now really, because you're not telling me anything. You're not sharing. I made a whole two whole videos talking about my past and history. You don't even want to make five seconds of telling me what's what your involvement I, with. I, 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 I get what you're saying. I get what everyone's saying. I just, this is not about me. This is about your 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 thing with 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 the thing with the hackers and stuff. So let well, it go. I took my turn, and now it's your turn. I'm not gonna let it go because this is always such dude, an gotta, underlying yeah, problem. You have to, us. dude. Let it go. Okay, just. Let it go. I trust me. Why don't you me. just tell just, me right no, now what's no, the worst that's dude, gonna happen? No, you have to trust me. The remainder of this video is no longer available. Thank you for your cooperation. Goodbye. <laughs>